Hi, and this is our local area network. So, what is the LAN? Uh, LAN stands for local area network. So, LAN is a standard and protocol that uh, defines how to connect devices that are relatively close together. Okay, so if you can look at this figure, let's say there is a one small company here. It is the engineering department, marketing, networking room, and HR department here. So, now as you can see, they all very close in one building. So that is the local area network here and uh, let's say you have one building here and another building is like um, this building is in California other building is in Atlanta when those two buildings they are connected to connected with each other in that case it called the wide area network okay so LAN as uh, shown here is the local area network now these are the couple switches um, and couple routers so these are the real life uh, router and switches so this switch you can think as a switch one is this one and switch two as well uh, this router um, when you want to transfer the data from one switch to another switch you need the router and these are the real uh, life router look like the first one on the top that's the 7600 and the bottom one is a Cisco 7200 okay so now that's the LAN basically again LAN is a standard and protocol so define how to connect devices that are relatively close okay so there are a couple LAN standard exist uh, the currently is the Ethernet here um, token ring and 5 FDDI and the ATM they are kind of obsolete uh, currently the Ethernet is the prevalent technology in the networking world okay so the term Ethernet is the uh, so Ethernet is the like family of standard that together define the physical and data link layers of the most popular type of LAN. So there is 10 base T, 10 base TX, and uh, 10 base U, and bunch of the uh, like 16 or 17 of those, or maybe more than that. Okay, so but that's the bunch of like uh, standards. Uh, then combined, they it call as Ethernet. Okay, so history originally Xerox, uh, they started it, and then they joined the Intel and uh, DEC, and then they called the DIX, D for DEC, I for Intel, X for Xerox. So they originally come up with the DIX Ethernet, but then eventually they transitioned this development to the IEEE. And IEEE commit, uh, created two committees, 802.3 and 802.2. So this controls the LLC, a logic link control sublayer, and 802.3, that is a media access uh, control. Okay, so basically, but they divide the 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 functionality in two layers so one uh, that control the physical uh, layer standard and another with the data link layer okay and um, it is a they are the IEEE has created like uh, many of those ethernet standards so let's say uh, this is a 10 base 2 10 base 5 that is the original ethernet so in that one what they did is they lay out the coaxial cable here and on that coaxial cable, they pin um, the Ethernet cables here. And those cables, they are connected to the NIC card. So all the cables, they are connected to big, uh, thick coaxial cable. And all devices, they are connected to this long uh, coaxial cable. So that is like one, two, three, from three engineering people to marketing. This is a server, so they can transfer the FTP. A uh, file file transfer protocol, and the CI is sitting here, and so on. So, so but uh, the problem here is, let's say uh, this network cable get broken, or there is a so that's coming in the next one. So let me give some brief description. Let's say there is a cable get broke here. In that case, uh, these people can um, they cannot talk with each other. Only CEO is also cannot communicate with. Uh, HR and sales department and you cannot do this um, FTP uh, FTP service that is running on this server okay so those are the disadvantage and then there is a bandwidth issue as well so some information on 10 base 2 10 is a 10 mbps megabits per second and to refer to how long distance what is the distance limitation so 2 refers to 185 close to 200 there is a 10 base 5 ethernet that is 10 mbps and 500 meter limitation 
Now when want, uh, when sender want to transfer data on the other computer, send the electrical signal and all device on the Ethernet receive it. Now if, if I go back here, let's say this person is sending the data and at the same time this person is sending the data. At that time collision can happen in this cable. Okay, so no, no, they cannot talk at the same time. Okay, so then they created the CSMSCD algorithm. So this is the algorithm. What it does, it it uh, that device. Um, so it it uh, it performed two functions. So let's say um, first thing they have to wait to make sure that uh, nobody is sending the data. So once they find out that uh, bus is empty. Uh, then it's called silent period and in that silent period uh, if they don't see the if see that cable is empty they send the data now once they send the data uh, so that's the time we have to wait so that's the one disadvantage second thing let's say um, they, these two they both are waiting bus is empty they both send the data at the same time and at that time colors in occur as soon as they detect that colors in occur uh, they have to wait for a random period of time so maybe this guy wait for like 5 milliseconds this guy wait for 6 milliseconds and if bus is still empty then this 5 millisecond guys um, his timer will expire earlier and then he will send the data okay and then once he send the data uh, nobody can send the data so there is a that's a disadvantage you have to wait for the make sure that bus is empty and when there is a collision happen at that time you have to wait for the random period of time okay so that's what this csma cd so as you can read here device want to send the data it has to wait until land is silent and then they can send the data and if collision occur uh, they both have to wait for a random time and then they can try again okay a uh, repeater is just try to uh, uh, land the uh, land by cleaning up the signal and repeat it so let's see if I would like um, this is for example I have 10 base 2 and if I want to send the data at 300 meter I can put uh, one repeater at 150 meter so I can send uh, the data at 300 meter far okay so that's the problem I was m mentioning earlier let's say the fault happen here and then uh, once this fault happen these people they cannot transfer the the they cannot talk or transfer the file with HR and self because this is the server now is is um, because of this cable fault they cannot talk with each other or they cannot transfer the file okay so then they come up with the 10 base t ethernet uh, what it does it make the central point here so all the cables they run here now if one of the cable damage only that person will be affected okay so that's called shared ethernet again uh, this is the 10 base t network but again here the problem still remains same this is a big collision domain anybody can send the data and collision can happen okay so then they come up with the the modern network so these are the uh, ben benefit and the disadvantage so they use the utp telephone cable which was already there a centralized point of connection so the centralized point of connection and fault isolation now disadvantage again CSM uh, CSM CD still algorithm still need to use and each device is on a bus they have to wait uh, again the both disadvantage of CSM CD that um, devices has to wait till bus is available and each device is back off when collision happen okay so those the disadvantage still happen in a net 10 based in network using hub so then they come up with the new uh, modern network that is switch ethernet so in this switch ethernet what happened that um, this engineering person and uh, marketing they can talk at the same time HR and marketing they can talk at the same time as well so this is not a collision domain okay um, so basically uh, this person send the data switch will look at the source destination source and destination address and then based on that switch make the decision and it create the the direct path between let's say this person and marketing guy so they can they are both talking at the full duplex more here now let's say this another engineering guy he wants to talk with the HR department this guy send the data 
switch is intelligent he know that this person wants to talk with the HR department here it will look at the MAC address and it will create the path between this person and HR department okay so now they both are, are transferring the data these are the people they are active I mean uh, passive at that time they are not doing anything and uh, again communication is happening between the first engineering person and marketing as well so the point here is that um, any person can talk with the full duplex mode while in the hub environment you have to wait while the bus is available here anybody can send data at any time with a full duplex mode okay so that's the advantage of modern network and this is a summary uh, so they are an intelligent devices and they help to reduce the and eliminate the collision they make the decision based on source and destination MAC address and send frames to only require ports while in hub they it distribute data to all the ports if switch need to forward the multiple frames out of the same port then there is a memory buffer memory buffer will store the data and then it is like first in first out kind of uh, memory it send the data to the uh, send um, receiver and the uh, shared ethernet is um, csma cd impose the uh, half duplex but uh, with the switch you can run the data at the full duplex mode so you can transmit and receive both at the same time okay while in half duplex you either you can send or you can receive okay but in full duplex you can do both operation at the same time so i think that's pretty much end of this uh, from the local area network um, hopefully you like this video. If you like it, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye.